Booktube. It is Friday, January 25th. Robbie Burns Day, if you're of Scottish descent, which my husband is. Myself and Angel are here to say hello. <laughs> I just taped a knitting, my knitting podcast, and this cat did the same thing, didn't you? She said, if you're out here talking to yourself, obviously you're talking to me, so I'm going to have to come and visit. <laughs> So I haven't had time for a whole lot of stitching this week. I have been doing more knitting than stitching. My husband has been home all week and we've been trying to get things done around the house, which has made it a little bit uh, tight for stitching time. I've also got some deadlines due next week, so I've been working on those. Uh, but I have got a little bit more done, so I'll insert a picture here of where I finished off last week. And this is where I am this week. So there's the whole piece. Hi, Angel. <laughs> so what I mainly have done is this bottom. I have the flowers and the majority of this sign finished. And I'm going to finish this off today and then do some back stitching here and fill in the um, middle. It's a really pretty green in there. I don't know if you can see that, but finish in the middle of those. Hey, stop chewing on that. No, no, naughty cat. No, go on, get, get, get. She's chewing on the elastic band on my, um, that goes around the outside of my book. And I don't want her, well, I don't want her to break it and I don't want her to swallow it either. Anyway, as I was saying, there's some pretty green, you see the pretty green in there between the daisies. They're supposed to be daisies. They look more like daisies when I get the, um, yellow put in the middle. Then I can do some more back stitching. So I'm getting close to finishing this section, which I wanted to by the end of the month, but I'm not sure if that's actually going to happen or not. I'm sorry, I forget where I'm looking because I have the camera oriented differently today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get this finished by the, the section finished by the end of the month that I wanted, but I certainly will have gotten a lot of stitching done. So I'm going to be happy with that regardless. So let's get started. Oh, I wanted to talk about these before we got started. Somebody had asked, and I'm sorry, I forgot to write down your name, but somebody had asked about these. They're called, the brand name is Mag Eyes, and I'll put that at the bottom of the screen. You can get the, um, the magnifiers in different strengths. The one that I have in right now is a five. But if you're going to order these, you can get them from Amazon. That's where I got mine from. And if you're going to order them, I would recommend getting several different uh, strengths for the glass because where you're ordering from Amazon, you can't try them on. Sometimes local needlework stores or yarn stores would have them or quilt store. I haven't seen them at Michael's, so I'm not sure if Michael's would carry them. But if you have a chance to go to a small store just to call to see if they have them, that would be a great idea. And as I was saying, I would get uh, the differing strengths there because you're not really going to know what strength you need until you try them on so that's what i did i ordered uh two i think two strengths come with the uh with the whatever this headpiece initially and then you can order the other one or two that uh, come with it from amazon so there you go that's this it only took about a week week and a half for me to get them in newfoundland so that's pretty good and I use them all the time. And as a matter of fact, my husband was using them yesterday for something he was working on. So they're, they're quite useful. Now, let's get going on, on this. You can't really see me. I'm stitching in hand. Maybe I'll move the camera. See what I can do here. Well, I'm kind of cutting off my head. Okay, let's move it up. Let's see if we can find a happy medium here so that you can see, okay, now you can see me stitching and you can see most of my head, so that works. All right, so I'm working on this little honey sail sign and I'm almost ready to finish this thread, move to another one. I'm stitching this on a piece of, I can't remember the cut size, but it's 28 count white Monaco. which I'm enjoying. I have to admit, I did a lot of my stitching in the late 80s, early 90s, and Ada cloth was the cloth of choice then. And I do a lot of my designs, either call for 28 count Monaco or 14 count Ada. 
and because that's what I've I'm used to. So it's really exciting to me to be getting into the world of using different types of fabric and different colors of fabric in a design or in um, my stitching. I find that really fun. So I'm just finishing that off with a gorgeous yellow tuck. And my thread came out, so now I need to trim it because the end has gotten a bit hairy. And I'm a licker. I lick my thread. So I'll pull that. There we go. There. That's finished nicely. Trim that. You know what? I've misplaced my um, my ort jar. It's probably fallen. The cat's probably knocked it down under the side table. So I need to get down and get that. But for now, we'll put my little threads there so the cat doesn't eat them. Oh, and I need... So this is, I'm using all DMC. Uh, this pat oh, I didn't show you where the pattern came from. So this is from the World of Cross Stitching magazine, issue 269. I was gonna show you the cover. This is the cover. Those of you who have been watching continuously are probably getting sick of seeing this. But anyway, the World of Cross Stitching Issue 269, you can still buy this on back order if you're interested in getting it. And I'll show you what the finished piece, not that one, that's the chart, the finished piece will look like this. So it's really, really pretty. It's a Emma Congdon, otherwise known as Stitch Rovia, uh, Stitch Rovia design. And I really, really like it. So I'm working on this side right here. So you can see the daisies here. They need the middle filled in, and I got a lot of back stitching and then border to do when I finish here. Okay, let's go back. So as I mentioned, I'm using all DMC thread. I think it called for um, it's listed DMC anchor and Madeira. Am I saying that right, Madeira? So I just, I didn't do a conversion or anything. I just followed the, I really like the color combination as it is. So for a change, because I often swap out for a change, I did get the uh, called for colors. Now I need to put my lights down and try not to hit the tripod at the same time. Angels hunting Bella. So there's probably going to be a little cat fight here in a second. You'll hear thumping and the hissing of cats. <laughs> so when I end and start, I use what's called a Bargello tuck. I learned that from Caroline at Off the Grid Needle Arts. Hi, Caroline. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I keep looking over here. I need to look there. Um, great way to secure your floss. In your project, I need to roll up the side here. So as you can see, I'm stitching in hand for this project. I don't, well, I'm not using a frame for a couple reasons. One is that it's in use. <laughs> it has a project on the 20 inch, um, the 20 inch, what are they called? Rods, the 20 inch rods. But I think the 20 inch rods would be a little overkill for this project anyway. And I'm a stitch in hand girl, so that's what I'm doing. The other pieces that I'm using for my frame, my lap frame, are a little bit bigger. And I think what I'll do next time is I'll work on my other piece that is on my lap frame. So you can see me stitching on my lap frame. Maybe you'll find that interested, or sorry, interesting. I guess I have to let people know that I just haven't had time to comment on your wonderful comments from my last few videos. I've really enjoyed reading them, but getting back to them, even hitting like on them, I found difficult over the past couple weeks for timing. I kind of get a brief moment to, to have a look because they come up on the screen of my phone, but then I have to take a couple extra steps to go in and comment, which sounds ridiculous, but... 
I just haven't had time. So I do absolutely appreciate hearing from you. I just, I said to my husband, I'm going to go out now and talk to me. Um, cause I'm looking at myself, but I really don't feel like I'm talking to me when I do these videos. I really feel like you're here with me and we're working together. We're having a little stitchy visit, which I absolutely love. And when you comment, it really keeps that conversation alive for me. So thank you so much for your lovely comments and your likes or even your dislikes. Kitten Stitcher did a little um, Kitten Stitcher's Teresa. And she's another floss tuber. If you haven't heard of her, you need to go check out Teresa as well as Caroline. Anyway, she is trying to get the most dislikes. She's trying to turn around the um, concept of dislikes being negative and she's trying to get the most dislikes ever on a video on YouTube. So I hope she meets her goal. But it's great because she's asking people if they really, if something really speaks to them and they really, really like it, to hit dislike instead of like. And then she'll know people are really enjoying it. <laughs> I think it's a great concept. Now I am on... Okay. Oops. Mm -hmm. I hum. Anybody else a hummer? I hum and I don't realize I'm humming. I used to get in trouble in school for that. And then the teacher would say, who was humming? And I'd stop and realize after 10 minutes it was probably me, but I never admitted it. I never ever admitted that it could have been me humming or whistling because I did I do both unconsciously. I think in grade six I almost got caught by Mr. Vincent. He was my much beloved grade six teacher and the reason I liked him so much is that he was a very um, fair but firm man and I loved that he was firm because the in grade five the teacher I had had I won't say her name she had no control of her classroom and I got severely bullied in that class and I always was always mad at her for not protecting the people who were getting bullied in that class I doubt she was aware I never told her I was getting bullied I don't know if anybody who was getting bullied that year admitted it but I knew once I hit Mr. Vincent's class I wasn't gonna get bullied anymore so grade six was the start of great things in my education because grade six was a real turning point for me that I started I think I started to really become more interested in not that I had been doing poorly in school before that but I think that's when something clicked for me in school I was lucky I really enjoyed going to school because my um, one of my little boys is not a school fan at all. He would much rather, and he's not so much a homeboy, homebody either. He just, he has not liked school ever since kindergarten. Now, you never know it by his marks or anything. I'm lucky in that his behavior at school is excellent. His uh, marks are excellent. He's a voracious reader, really good all around academic kid. And his teachers probably don't know it, but he hates school. He really doesn't like it. And I often with him, sorry, the cat is playing with one of my bags down there. The, I often with him have to, uh, our mornings can be rough because he doesn't want to go to school. So I often drop him off when we're both angry because he's had a rough morning and that's put me in a bad mood and then I have a rough morning and it's, yeah. But you know, that happens, I guess. We've agreed he is not a morning person and although I am, I can only handle so much negativity in the morning and then I'm no longer a morning person. But that's just the nature of kids. I'm sure he'll figure it out. So you may or may not notice that I'm, though I'm stitching in hand, I think you can see that I'm stitching here. No, you can't see what I'm doing though. I'm kind of, uh, I find going right to left is when I do the most of my stitching in hand. But left to right, I do half stitching in hand and half 
what? Poke? Poke method? Is that what that's called? The way we, most of us learned how to cross stitch. Not everybody, because some people learn the sewing method right from the get-go, but stab method, I've also heard that. Maybe it's the stab method. So what else is new in your part of the world? Are you getting a heat wave? Do you have snow? Six degrees here today, raining. So sad because yesterday there was a light snowfall. The entire day and the trees were looking so pretty. Split a uh, part of my fiber there unintentionally. I think I have it fixed. I don't quite have it fixed. Here we go. So it's Friday. Off the grid Friday. I've been really trying not to tape my Stitch With Me videos on Friday because I know that Caroline stitches her videos on Friday and I kind of, you know, I guess we can't all, I was kind of thinking that everybody could or should tape videos on Friday, but I can't seem to find any other day of the week to do a Stitch With Me video. So I will probably be doing Stitch With Me videos on Friday from, maybe I'll try for Thursday next week. Well, I have to try for Wednesday or Thursday next week because on the weekend, next Saturday, we're going to Disney. And the boys still don't know. We're going to tell them Saturday morning. So I think I may even, I won't tape it for you. I'll tape it for us. But I'm probably going to tape the reaction. I don't like showing the boys' faces on uh, YouTube. So I won't actually show them, but I will tell you all about it afterwards. Because I think they're going to lose their minds. At least I hope they are. If they're half as excited as me, that's pretty excited because I am very excited. I love Disney. Love it. Only been there once. Was there once in, uh, we've been to Florida since. We went to um, Universal Studios and SeaWorld and Legoland two or three years ago. So the boys have been to Orlando but we didn't do anything Disney. And this year, because they're a little bit older now and they've seen Indiana Jones and they've seen the Star Wars movies, we decided we go to Disney and hopefully the plan is for them to do the Jedi training because it's only from ages four to 12 and our oldest son is 11 and a half. So if he's gonna do it, we have to get him there pronto. So that's the plan. Now that looks grand. I just finished my little square sign there. Hopefully I'm in a place where you can see that. So down right here. So I finished that. There's no, uh, oh, there's an outline in. And that's 433. So let me put this thread away. So for, for me and my thread, I take the thread I've already been using and I just put that in the middle. I don't know how people keep their thread, but this is how I do it. And then I wrap it around the center of my skein. And then I just put it back in the bag with all the other skeins that are for this project. You see my very fancy Ziploc bag? But of course it's housed in this very pretty Evertote bag. I have quite a few Evertote bags and I love this one. I love all of them. I have a addiction. <laughs> I have a problem with Evertote bags. So I think what I'll do, let's see, I would really like to get the yellow put in those daisies. So what color is that? So this is the only one I've subbed out 
is, it calls for 728, but I'm using Gentle Arts Harvest Moon. And because it's the only Gentle Arts in my bag, it makes it very easy to find. Okay, I need to trim the back of this, it's uneven. Get that threaded, there we go. So I use a size, what size do I use? I think it's 28, it's a Bowen, it's the brand name. I was introduced to these because I used to use the John James ones, John James um, needles. And then I went to order some from Traditional Stitches, which is my, although it's across the country from me, it's my, where I buy a lot of my wholesale products for my design business including my needles. And so I was trying to get some of the John James ones and either they don't carry them or they didn't have any of the size that I needed in stock. So Janice, the nice lady who was helping me, suggested the Bowen style one. She said that's the brand she uses and she really likes them. And that's what I've been using ever since. And that's what goes in my cross stitch kits, our Bowen needles. Oh, so pretty. I really like this design. It's so nice. And doing it as a stitch along has been extremely motivating. Because I know that there's a couple of you out there that are stitching along with me. Oops, I just made a big mistake. Well, not a big mistake, it's cross stitch. How big can it be? But I certainly just made a mistake. Take that out. Oh, I'm not gonna come out. Well, I've managed to get this in there good. And that has to come out. What have I done? And it's so... Okay, unfortunately... Oops, dropped my needle. I am going to have to cut those stitches and take them out. Because I don't know what I did, but... It is not coming out. There we go. Now it's coming out. There we go. Oh well, I only had three stitches in, so that's fine. I don't know what I did. Knotted it somehow. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. I love the variegation in the over-dyed floss or the fancy floss or whatever you want to call it. Oops. Sorry, did your world just move? <laughs> I kicked the tripod back, so let's look at the variegated. Hopefully you'll see the variegated color. You see that? Let me hold it up at the, no, it's too blown out. There.
not really focusing, but anyway. It's a beautiful color. I really like it. I'm going to have to get going soon. I've got to do more packing. In the midst of the packing, I am... Um, we got some hand-me-downs a couple weeks ago, and there were quite a few uh, summer clothes in them, so a lot of shorts, and some winter clothes as well. So it was just a delicious couple, ba three bags, three bags of hand-me-downs from two different friends. And, you know, a lot of brand name things like Carter's and such that I don't usually buy because I don't get to those places for the sales and such, so. That's just great. So they got some gorgeous, gorgeous clothes. And it was kind of my sneaky way of getting them to try on their, uh, sorry, my hair is getting in my mouth. Um, it was a, a great way to get them to go through their shorts and their t-shirts and such on the premise that they were, you know, we had hand-me-downs, so let's get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need and put in the stuff that we are going to use and didn't need to mention going on a holiday at all. So that worked out very, very well. And now two of three, I still need to work on eldest, but two of three have beautifully cleaned out drawers. And I know what t-shirts and shorts I can pack for them because we're going to pre-pack on the Friday night. We don't leave till um, two... 2.30 in the afternoon, but we'll have their clothes packed and then we'll just, sorry I hit you again, we'll just have them pack like their books and toys and anything else like that that they want to bring, but the rest of it we're going to have, we're going to do on Friday night or I will have pre-packed uh, before we even get to Friday. They probably, they're not going to notice if there's shorts and t-shirts missing, I don't think. Well, my oldest son will because he doesn't have a whole lot of t-shirts, so he's, I'm going to definitely have to do on Friday night. But I don't think the other two are going to notice. And uh, right now, my husband, one of the things he's been working on this week has been painting the inside of our master closet. We're converting it. We have a, a Kia wardrobe on one big wall in our bedroom, and we're converting the closet to a closet slash linen closet. So we're putting in a proper uh, closet insert. And right now to do that, because we, we've been here for um, nine years in the house. So it's given the closet a paint, freshening that up and before we buy the closet insert to put in and get done there. So that means that our room is currently a mess, which the silver lining in that is that if I throw an extra bag in there to start packing kids' clothes in for this trip, they're not going to notice. So that's awesome. So there we go. One, one daisy. One Daisy has a middle. Yay! And unfortunately, I'm going to have to stop it there. I was just looking at the clock, and I've been chatting already for almost half an hour. Um, hopefully, I will see you next week. As I mentioned, next week's going to be pretty busy with packing, and I have a couple deadlines to the newsletter for the Rug Cooking Guild is due. And I have, uh, what else do I have? I have a design that's due that I may hopefully get finished before I go because I have a tight deadline. So I hope that you find some time to get some stitching in this weekend and this week, and I will catch up with you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.